Hello, hello, Heidi Dean here, social media coach for actors. And today's going to be fun. I am going to answer all of your social media questions for your acting career um, and social media questions in general, because let's face it, sometimes you need something technical. Sometimes you want to know about a new feature and it may not necessarily ref go match up with your acting career. So I'm here to answer any social media questions, whether it's about Instagram, Twitter, anything guys. So just let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me, somebody let me know and let me know in the chat where you're coming from. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And I'm very, very excited to be here on my channel, which sounds funny, but I have been going live everywhere else since March. I think like eight or nine times over and backstage or backstage magazines, uh, YouTube channel. Um, I've been doing lives for SAG after us, uh, SAG foundation, uh, for agents and managers, but I realized earlier this week that I have not gone live for you guys here. So I am sorry about that, <laughs> but I'm here today for you guys. I'll be in for about an hour um, answering as many questions as you have. Hi, Edward. Hi, Candy. Hi, Kenzie. Hi, Ryan. You guys are from all over the place. I love it. Um, hi, Jana. You can see me and hear me. Perfect. Chicago. Tarzana. Awesome. All right. Ben, we'll talk about that a little later on because <laughs> we all know just as much information about what's going on with TikTok as everybody else. So, all right, guys. Um, hop in. Let me know your questions while they start coming in. Um, I'm just going to do a quick reminder for you guys. Um, once a year, I do an annual summer social media sale on all my social media classes for actors. And just a reminder, it's going on right now. It's been going on for a week, actually. So I know some of you guys have already um, joined class, already starting class. But if you haven't, that ends on Saturday. And I just want to let you guys know so you don't miss out. I only do these huge discounts this in this way, in this style, during the summer because it's a great time to work on your social media and your marketing. All right. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay, so actually the first question I'm seeing is, could you speak about the Instagram class? <laughs> cool, and this is this live is not necessarily, it's not about my classes, it's about your social media questions, but if you do have questions about any of the, uh, the social media classes, I'll be happy to answer them as well. Um, the Instagram class is Insta Actor, and it's really like your soup to nuts for Instagram for actors. Uh, we start with your first impressions, you'll learn what to post, there's a whole module on stories, IGTV, we talk live, we talk about networking and connecting with the people in the business you want and how to organize that on Instagram. And then of course we talk about growing your following through engagement and collaborations. So it's really your one-stop shop for learning Instagram. Okay. Um, who was that? That was Jana Morrison. So let me know if that answers your questions. And ask me, um, Jana, if there's anything specific you want to learn about Instagram, I'll let you know if it's in there. I, I bet it is because it pretty much covers everything. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Okay, cool. And you know what? I'm just going to really quickly drop that link in here for you guys because I know somebody's going to ask me. I've been so spoiled going live for backstage because I have the lovely Katie um, Menard over there who's their, their social media manager running the chat. So I've been very spoiled that I haven't had to actually do it myself. All right. Okay, cool. Um, actually, Ben, I will answer your question really fast about Ben uh, with Ben's Eyes, who I love. He's awesome across social media. You should follow him. He had wanted us to know about my thoughts on the TikTok ban. And I um, really, Ben, we... We all know about the same amount of information right now. It's just speculation. A lot of it's tit for tat like with one country against the other. Um, I say keep grading there. Ben is making, if you are on TikTok, follow with Ben's eyes. He's making, he's doing fantastic content there. Um, so, I mean, we will see. I'm going to keep creating. I've been there for a month and I've been getting so much traction and have two videos that now have 40,000 and 20,000 views even with my small following. So I love it. I'm going to keep creating and I think you should too. Um, also download all your videos, Ben, just in case. <laughs> and of course, use it to build your Instagram right now because um, there still is time to do that. I personally, I don't think it's going to go away here, but we'll see. Um, all right. How to gain Ritika. I think that's how I, I, I say your name. How to gain attention of casting agencies through social media. First of all, I want you to flip that thinking. I want you to change your language. We don't, when we say how to gain attention, it sounds like we're trying to get them to notice me, notice me, notice me, right? And when we talk like that on social media, a lot of actors resort 
to techniques like tagging casting directors in all their posts where the casting directors have nothing to do with them, right? Um, you know, replying on posts about auditions and watching my reel and all these things that um, it's not it's not the way to get attention of casting directors on on social media, okay, or agents or managers or anybody really in the business. Um, Ritka, really the way to do it is it's a full system that you actually need. You need to have your first impression in place. You need to have a posting strategy. You need to make sure that when you do bring them over, when you do uh, network with them and get them to go over to your accounts, that things look good, that they're gonna wanna find out more information. They're gonna wanna go to your website, your YouTube channel. They're gonna wanna watch your reel. So that's actually the first step before you ever do anything to get someone's attention in the business. You need to make sure your stuff looks good, right? Um, I know some of you guys, I have a, a video of a pig floating around in, in the ocean on my Twitter right now that a lot of you guys have loved um, about the summer sale. And it's the music goes, I look good. I look good. And it's, <laughs> that's, that's what you need to do. You need to make sure your social media looks good before you show it to anybody. Okay. Then you need to get super specific, um, Ritika, about who you want to meet. OK, that's the biggest mistake I see a lot of actors making is that they, they see somebody with the name casting director in their bio and they just go follow, follow, follow. No, you need to know who you want to meet and you have to get super targeted about that. Um, you need to know who you need to know where you're going to reach them and you need to know how. Those are the three things you need to know. And that's a lot more than I can dive into in one question. But I'll get you started. Rika. Think about what type of projects do you want to do? Do you want to do commercials? Do you want to do films? Do you want to do theater? Um, do you want to do TV? And what, what type of work do you want to do? What directors do you want to work with? What projects do you want to be a part of? We can look at the people that are part of these projects, and not just casting directors, but everybody from writers to producers, and we can join their circles, their conversations on platforms like Twitter and Instagram, because that's how those um, sites are set up. Really, we can make connections with these new people there. So I want to give you some homework, um, because really think about who do you want to know, who do you want to work with, and start doing that research. Then your next step will be going on social media and then starting to build real human relationships with them. And there's all sorts of ways on social media that you can get on someone's radar. In some of my classes, you know, we teach 13 ways to get on someone's radar um, on Instagram or on um, or on Twitter. There's all different savvy ways that you can use the features to really pop up in someone's notification and actually get noticed beyond all the other traffic they're seeing. But just to start, since your question talked about how do I get their attention? How do they notice me? I really want you to think of who do you want to work with? Who do you want to build a relationship with? Get more targeted, clean up your social media, and then we'll talk. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Amalia, what do they look for when on social media? I'm not quite sure what you're asking. I'm guessing you're saying uh, possibly people in the industry. It's all different things. Sometimes they are looking at numbers. A lot of times they're looking to see if you're even on social media, if you're a team player. You know, I've had a lot of clients that have been up for roles and they found out they got it because they were simply on, you know, they were talented, but they were on social media and somebody else wasn't they could share the project, right? Social being on social media makes you that team player. Okay. Um, also, a lot of times they're looking if you're further along for a, a role, they're checking social media, especially for family friendly networks. Uh, if you're going to be a brand ambassador, they're checking to see if you're going to be a liability. You know, social media says a lot about you. So really, I can spend five minutes on somebody's social media and I know what they stand for. I can see if they might be a problem um, for a project. So I, it's my job a lot. I get a lot of clients from agents and managers and they just got a client from Disney, actually. And I got to clean up their social media because it does not reflect the Disney brand. Right. So you got to think about what are they looking for? Sometimes it's, you know, red flags. There's a lot of people getting fired right now because they said the wrong thing sometimes years ago. And we all know it's been in the news a lot the last month. And um, they're getting fired from projects. Big, big people. So that's what they look for as well. So you're going to want to make sure your, your presence is cleaned up, right? And that's something I definitely do with my clients in my classes. Got to clean it up before we grow it, right? All right. 
All right. Hi from Brazil. Hey, we got Tulsa, Brazil, Spain. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect. Oh my God. There's so many questions about classes and I was, that was not even my intention today. Um, Jana says, I want to know if classes are go at your own pace. Yes. Every single one of my classes, it's go at your own pace. There's no scheduled lives for them or anything. And Rockstar Challenge and Insta Actor, there are actually checkpoints with me over direct message where you get feedback, direct feedback from me and my eyes on your social media. Okay. Um, so yes, it's do it at your own pace. And even if you start in six months, you can use those checkpoints. Okay, got it. All right, um, Candy. Candy, can you ask that question again? I want to answer a question about social media um, beyond the classes. <laughs> I love that you guys are excited about class. Um, let's see. I'm going to answer one more and then I'll get back to you, Candy. Um, Rhiannon. Hi, Heidi. My question is whether LinkedIn is at all a useful platform for actors. It can be. It definitely can be. And it can be especially important um, for actors, for voice actors that might be um, looking to collaborate with brands, obviously. Um, my question for you, um, Rhiannon, is are you already on LinkedIn? Because any social network can help you as an actor if you have a network there, if you have existing connections. So um, I don't use LinkedIn personally very much, um, mainly because of my audience of actors are, they are there, but most of you guys are elsewhere, right? So that's why I don't use it. But I want you, I, I want you to really do some research, Rihanna. Do you have a lot of connections there? Do you have, are there people in the business that you've worked with that are on LinkedIn? If so, that's a fantastic place to stay connected with them. I look at the social media universe and I divide uh, all the networks into two categories, basically. And those are, we have our interest-based platforms. Those are our Twitters, our Instagram, our Pinterest, where we follow um, people, places, or things that we like, right? It's totally okay to follow a director, follow anybody on those platforms um, who we don't know if their account's public, right? So those are our interest-based platforms. But then we have our platforms that are based on something called the graph search. And those are based on people we know or friends of friends we know. They're a little bit um, more closed. Those are the platforms. It's not as good to direct message people you don't know. Um, those are your Facebook pages. Those are LinkedIn. What they are fantastic for, though, Rhiannon, is staying top of mind with the people you already know in the business. OK, so if you already have connections on LinkedIn, if you already have connections on your Facebook profile, use them because I, I look at those as like a little in mini club. Right. You can actually get in trouble on LinkedIn if you send too many connection requests to people that you don't know. If they LinkedIn gets too many of those, I don't know this person, you can get suspended. So use it like that, Rihanna. There's also a lot of LinkedIn groups as well that could help you. Um, I have a whole video on this YouTube channel about how to use uh, LinkedIn and how to clean up your LinkedIn. Because another thing with LinkedIn is uh, for those of us that don't use it very often, but we have an account, sometimes it's the first thing to come up in a Google search. So in terms of people looking us up, you want to make sure it, it at least looks good if you have um, if you have an account and that it's actually sending us to the proper places. So you have the links to your other social media. So if that's the first place somebody sees you, they can go elsewhere to find you if you're not playing there. Let me know if that makes sense, Rhiannon. Okay. All right. ST Moore, what, on one of your talks on Backstage about Instagram, you talked about collaborating with other people. What are some good ways to collaborate with people without being face-to-face -face with people? Actually, when I talked about collaboration, I did, a, I did a live for Backstage Magazine on their YouTube channel a couple months back. You guys can look it up. Um, and it was five Instagram tips for actors. And at one point, somebody asked me about growing your following. So I broke down um, a follower growth strategy, which, Jana, is the strategy I talk about in Instactor in depth. Um, and I talked about that there's really two main ways we grow our following on Instagram. We grow it through engagement and we grow it through collaborations. Okay. Um, these are two active ways. Yes, we can use hashtags. Yes, we can create posts that get shared, but I'm talking about those active strategies that where we really see growth. Engagement's one and collaborations is the other. Those collaborations that I'm talking about, ST, are all online. Nothing I was talking about actually is in person. And that's why social media is so important for actors right now, um, because where else are you going to safely network? Nowhere. It's always been important, but it's kind of pushed this, um, pushed social media for actors into the limelight, to, to the spotlight, right? It's why I've been so busy going live everywhere. <laughs> so, so ST, some of those collaborations I talked about on Instagram, is first of all, we got to find out who your target audience is, which I'm sure will come up at some point, but I just want to address the collaborations. Once you know what that audience is, 
find a like-minded account that might have that audience. And you guys can do shout outs for each other on stories. It happens all the time. Sometimes you see an actor with another actor and a picture is totally staged. They may also, they may hang out, but a lot of times they are collaborations that are unpaid. Um, shout outs, Instagram takeovers is a form of collaboration on, um, on Instagram and something I do show you in Instactor. Um, uh, collaborations also going live with someone. So if I go live on Instagram with my buddy, Ben, who I don't know if he's still here, but with, you know, with Ben, um, if I go live with him on Instagram, what's going to happen is all his followers will get a notification that he's live and all my followers will get a notification that I'm live. That is going to help both of us and help us grow our audience, right? Because we're tapping into each other's audiences and growing them together. Okay, ST. So those collaborations on across social media can be a fantastic way to grow your following. Um, that's just Instagram. But you think uh, Twitter, Live tweeting is an example of collaborations, Q and A's, a lot of things that you're asked to do as an actor. I have a client who I'm so proud of. She's a British actress. Um, she was just guest starring on a major Brit uh, British show last week. And I made her live tweet. <laughs> I made her live tweet. I made her do a countdown up until the show. Um, she tracked the hashtag. She shared really awesome behind the scenes post. And she went from, I think, 1,100 followers to over 5,000 followers. I um, mean, it's, it's still growing because people are still watching the show um, in just that couple of days. That's a collaboration, live tweeting. And you can see amazing growth across social media. Awesome, right? So I hope that helps ST. Let me know, ST Moore. Uh, let me know if that helps. Um, I, Candy, let me get your question. She says, I can't decide between the rock star, uh, that's my social rock star challenge course and post like a boss class that's on sale in the summer sale if you guys came late. Um, they are totally different. I've had lots of rock stars take posts like a boss. Um, if you want a system, a complete system for Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, uh, as in to how to set it up, how to, what to post, how to network and grow, that's rock star. Post like a boss is just about posting. And it's a very unique perspective where I turn posting into a board game. You get hundreds and hundreds of post ideas. Um, and I show you how to use the board game schedule every month. So post like a boss will be your posting schedule for the next year or two. You'll have plenty of posting ideas or we'll cycle them. Um, so they're totally different. <laughs> um, but and they can be taken together as well so all right okay let's see whoa holy questions just moved i love youtube live but the questions when they bump bump really fast okay let's see with ben's eyes great advice i don't know if that was about tiktok or what it was about but thank you ben keep on posting ben ben put your tiktok in here so everyone can see it more people need to see it um Okay, Ryan, hi Heidi, love your videos, they're so helpful. Oh, thank you and thank you for being here today. Okay, Michael, how can I get more subscribers and followers on YouTube and Instagram without having to pay a fee? Well, you should never have to pay a fee to get followers. That's, if you're ever paying, unless you mean you're paying for a growth manager because on Instagram, there are people, you know, you could have a social media manager growing it for you. Um, so that is a big question, Michael, and those are totally different questions. Let me start with YouTube. We just talked a little bit about, you know, active and collaborations on Instagram, um, but how to get more subscribers on YouTube. Now, I'm not sure what kind of channel you have, so I'm just gonna give you a general answer. Um, you guys, when you, I know a lot of you already wrote questions here. When you ask me a question, try to be as specific as possible, but as deep, um, but as, succinct as possible. Okay. But specific meaning if you have a YouTube channel, tell me what it's about. Tell me, you know, I'm making a YouTube channel. It's for my web series or I travel the world and do this. So I really have a good idea about what your case is, or I'm going to have to give kind of a general answer. Okay. So more subscribers on YouTube. So subscribers on YouTube, I'm going to have a cup of coffee and then we'll talk subscribers. <laughs> All right. So Subscribers on YouTube, um, the strategy really is a multi-phase strategy. I look at YouTube, it's like a store, right? It's like a, it's, you, you're opening a store and we have to make sure that you've got a sign outside. You gotta make sure that the walls are painted, that you've got products on the shelves, which are your videos obviously, and everything looks awesome before we tell people that you have a channel, okay? So Michael, that is step one to get more subscribers. Without looking at your channel, if you don't have your store set up, you you may never get a subscriber, 
right? Um, because if we invite people in that store and it looks like CRAP, then nobody's going to stick around. No one's going to subscribe and no one is going to come back to watch the videos again. Okay. So let me give you a couple things to make sure your first impression is optimized on your YouTube channel, Michael, because this will apply to a lot of people, whether you have, whether it's just for your reel, whether you are actually creating content like a web series or you're doing a blog on YouTube. Okay. And this is something I break down in my YouTube essentials um, for actors class. Okay. In depth, but let me give you some things. So, um, I'll give you a little first impression checklist on YouTube. So first we're going to uh, make sure you have your channel icon, your profile photo. Uh, then you wanna work on that channel art. That's a billboard across the top, okay? Make sure it, it, it says a couple things. Obviously how often we are going to expect your videos. Make sure um, it clearly tells us what to expect from your channel. You know, it's, it should be made for a certain audience. Like what is this channel about? I should know from the header. I should know that your videos are every Thursday. The reason I'm going live on Thursday right now is because I put out videos on Thursday and I didn't put one out this week because I was going live, right? People like to know what to expect and when to expect on your channel, okay? So make sure that's in your header. Um, a great resource to make one of those is something called Canva, C-A-N-V-A.com. It's totally free to use, okay? So make sure you have that header photo. Um, make sure you've added any links along the top. You can add your website links, your other social media links, Right. This is important because you're going to start getting subscribers and you want to make sure they also know where else you want them to go. You can use your YouTube to grow your Instagram. You can use your YouTube to grow your Twitter. OK, no social media network is the end destination. I would say your social media platform should also always be sending you somewhere else, whether it's your website or growing another platform. They all kind of work together. OK, so you're optimizing those different things. I want you to make sure you have a featured video on your channel, Michael. And if all of this is very new, um, it might not be, I don't know, I don't know where your channel is. Uh, if all of it's very new, then the YouTube Essentials class might be good for you. But we have, we have a choice to add a featured video on our channel. If you go to my channel and you've never been there, it is probably the ultimate social media checklist video that kind of is soup to nuts, get started on social media. If you are a returning subscriber, my featured video is my latest YouTube video. So that means that someone lands on my channel and I have something there for them to capture them as a subscriber or to keep them interested. Okay. Um, so make sure you choose that featured video, Michael, as part of your first impression on YouTube. Um, then I want you to make sure that you organize your channel. If you go to my channel, you'll see I have playlist because I want to make sure everything looks good. People can find my videos. If people land on my channel, it's social media for actors. I have an Instagram for actors playlist. I have a tutorial playlist. Um, which is actually great for you guys to know. If you want to learn TikTok, if you want to learn Instagram, Twitter, I have intro tutorials. I have a whole playlist. I have an IMDb Pro tutorial. They're all in that tutorial playlist, right? So Michael, I want you to organize your channel, organize those playlists so we can easily see things, so we can find things. Playlists are also going to help you rank. Um, I have, if you look up social media for actors, I've, I'm, I think I, <laughs> I think TubeBuddy, the tool I use tells me I'm like, I don't know, 20 out of the 30 things on the first page, um, which I'm quite proud of. <laughs> I'm also another four or five of them because they're backstage magazine stuff. But um, uh, you wanna take over the search, but some of those things that take over search on that, that I have ranking are my playlist about social media for actors. So Michael, when you're organizing this playlist, think about um, what would people be searching for with the videos you have, like I said, I don't know what kind of content you're creating. Um, and can you organize playlists that people could find as well? Those will help you rank and help you get more subscribers. So those are some things that you can do um, for your first impression. Um, but then Michael, you also need, you need a whole system. You need to optimize your titles, your tags, your descriptions for your videos. Um, these are your keywords that are gonna help you come up in search. Okay, also your thumbnails. Said so this, I could do a whole live on YouTube, <laughs> getting subscribers. Um, but hopefully that will get you started, Michael. Work on that first impression, okay? Make sure that house, make sure that store, I mean, looks good so that when somebody finds your channel, they're gonna wanna subscribe. All right. Um, Robert Ball, oh my God, you are, that's such a great question. Robert was on my Twitter today or yesterday when I asked the question. He said, if, I could, if you could work with one actor, I, I asked on Twitter, if you could work with one actor, um, uh, it would be fill in the blank. And I actually had a fill in the blank on the thing. So his question is, if you could work with one actor, um, would it be, do you answer with a 
at symbol or you know, a username or a hashtag. It's up to you, Robbie. You don't have to answer with either, but hey, you might get on the radar. Um, I would answer with the username if they're on social media. You know, they may not, you know, if they're not on Twitter, then because I asked the question on Twitter, then you might have to use the hashtag. So I don't know if you noticed some people were using hashtags, some people were using username. It's probably because the person isn't on social media. Then use the hashtag. Okay. And then people might actually see your post, which is awesome. Um, awesome. Mabel. Hi, Heidi. What are your thoughts on Pinterest and how should us actors utilize it? Honestly, Pinterest, I, I, I love Pinterest because I have a five-year-old daughter and we use it for our projects all the time and for recipes. Um, honestly, for, I mean, there are different ways you can use it. If you're talking about specifically for your acting career, um, you could use it actually to network and to build relationships. Um, I talked a little while ago about the difference between the uh, different kinds of platforms that we have the graph search platforms with the people you know and the friends of friends you know, and then we have those interest platforms. Those are Twitter. Um, Instagram and Pinterest. And I know many actors who, while everybody was trying to build relationships on Twitter and on Instagram, they were over on Pinterest and found some of their favorite people, casting directors, all sorts of people over on Pinterest. And guess what? What they're doing over there, they're talking to them about the crocheting project and the recipe and the fact they're both moms. So really, Mabel, that type, it's a, it's a, platform that's set up just like these guys right here. I just noticed they're right here. Um, so you can use it to grow out to, to interact and grow relationships, right? Now, it can also be utilized, Mabel, if you have content, you got to think about um, if you're creating content, where is your audience? Um, and Pinterest has a huge demographic of women. So it may actually be a place to find that to ask yourself, well, what's my content about? And um, can I create boards around the subject matter of my content to, to draw my audience in from Pinterest? Okay. Um, so it depends. I don't know what if you're creating content or not, Mabel. So you can you might be able to use it in both in both ways. All right. Okay, I'm having a sip of coffee and then I'm gonna keep going. Woo, I'm gonna be answering lots of questions today. And like I said, I plan to be on for an hour, but if I need to be, I'm gonna just keep going. Um, all right, the only thing I'm missing out on is my little, my five-year-old's in the little kiddie pool outside. <laughs> Cause it's a thousand degrees today. Maybe you get lucky and she'll have to come in and she'll say hi. She's hilarious. She wants to be mommy right now, um, she'll take my little tripod and go in the back room and she'll say, she'll she'll be like, mommy, I'm taking a call now with magic camera or I'm going live now or I'm working with a client. So she's like trying to be mini mommy. And every time I go live or work with clients, she says, tell them I said hi and I love them. So she loves you all, apparently. <laughs> I have to teach her that's kind of weird, but universal love for all is great, so. All right, Tom, do you think actors need a website? Is there any point to them anymore or should we treat social media as our website? Well. To be truthful, social media is not a website. We have no control over social media. We have no control if TikTok or anything is going to go away tomorrow, right? So um, I, I don't like to say social media is your website. It's They're, they're totally different. Um, it depends. There are certain people I think need a website. If you have content, you need a website. A lot of musical theater artists... Um, I think you need a website um, because at some point you might have an album. Um, you might be doing live performances. I mean, there's ways we can actually um, pixel our website so that we can always track who's who's there and who's interested in us so that if we do have a show, we can serve them inexpensive ads to make sure we get butts in the seats. OK, and that's what my you created it now what class is all about. So, Tom, yes, I think for a lot of actors, a website's important and it's a, it's a hub for all your marketing materials. So, um, you know, it's a place that you can have your reel, you can have um, your resume, your press kit. If you have one, um, you can have everything in one place, your media. People can contact you. Um, my husband is a TV actor and a Broadway actor, and I can't tell you how many jobs he has booked in the last couple of years because the theater, the director, the artistic director contacted him directly through his website, even though he has an, he has numerous agents and he has a manager. They found him through his website, right? So, um, and when people, you got to think it's, it's not just that people are finding you through agents and managers. A lot of times you're getting referred by somebody else in the business for a project and having a website is good for that. Right. Um, so I, I think they're different. I think it's kind of an ebb and flow. Like our website sends people to our social media, our social media sends people to our website. Right now, do you need to spend a lot of money on a website? 
no. I think there's there's a lot of designers that are cheaper out there and are good. Um, there's a lot of free websites for actors and um, um, or inexpensive templates. Um, I don't want to get too specific, but actually, if you're on TikTok, I just I have like three recent TikToks about websites for actors. And one is about if you do want to use something like Wix, not all the templates are good for actors. They look terrible. But I highlight four templates that are set up for actors. OK, and that is over on TikTok. So I'm marketing for actors there. Um, ben, if you're still there, drop my username in the thing because I know you know it. OK, um, Janice says, thank you. Edward started a new Instagram account. How do I check my incoming messages? Edward, I just saw that you followed me. And actually, I have a tip for you. You need to change your link. You're sending me to the LinkedIn feed. You need to change that. You need to actually share your LinkedIn profile link. OK, I hope you're still here, Edward. It's important. You sent me you sent me nowhere. And this is this is why it's important. You never know who's looking. Edward followed me and I had he's been on my lives. So I clicked over. But then I his link didn't work. So fix that. Um, Edward, go watch my tutorial on my YouTube channel, my Instagram for beginners and stories tutorial. It'll show you how everything works. Direct messages, everything. OK. And I know you're not ready for class right now, but when you are, Instactor will show you, too. OK. Um, and Cassidy, casting directors like people to appreciate the work. Isn't it okay to direct message great job on a project you were an extra on? Well, and the problem, the main problem is if they don't follow you, they're not going to even see that message. It's going to go in that other inbox with probably like 50,000 other messages from people asking for auditions. It's true. I used to run social media for big actors, producers, and casting directors. And I was in that, I was in the thick of it every day, which is one reason I started educating because I knew people just didn't know what it meant to be on an account like that. I also have a big following. So that's what my other inbox looks like. Because a lot of people just assume I cast and I'm on that side. I work with a lot of casting directors and agents. I have a lot of friends that, and colleagues that are casting directors and agents. So I get messages like that. So it's not, it is not the best way to do it. Um, a direct message is like a private line to their inbox. Um, and, and I said, you were an extra on it. They, they didn't, they might not necessarily even cast you on it. You know what I mean? Are you talking about the extra casting director? Um, I would, it, I would be more targeted. I talked about it earlier. Who do you want to know? Which it sounds like you, you know what that is and find different ways to get on the radar that don't involve the inbox. That is like a very, that's a more private place, even on Twitter and Instagram. Um, you can mention people, give them a shout out and mention them, not just tag them in your headshot. You know, there are different ways we can get on somebody's ra radar um, beyond the inbox, right? Um, you know, why don't, you know, if it's, if the project is aired, because you can get in trouble as an extra, um, why not post something from behind the scenes or from the, you know, your time on the project, and then do a little shout out to the, to the casting director there in, in stories, right? That's a great way to get on, on someone's radar and mention them. Okay. Um, just always be careful about the direct message. Cause like I said, if they don't follow you, they might not even see it. Right. All right. Okay, Mary, if you are posting something industry related in your story, should you use hashtags? And if so, leave them visible or hide them under an image? That really depends what the image is. I don't know specifically what um, what what the image is, what the post is about. Um, but first I wanna say thank you for joining me, Mary. I know you've been on a couple of my lives lately. Um, this is why it's important to use a consistent header, or a consistent profile photo, guys, because I'll remember you. I remember Mary, because she's got this photo. Um, so, Yes, you should use hashtags because you may show up in um, Instagram stories, search for that hashtag. Um, I suggest that you use, um, especially in stories, because they still don't tell us who gets to show up in search on stories for hashtags, but less people show up there than on the feed, you know, explore tab for, I mean, the, the uh, hashtag feed, right? So I would use less competitive definitely use less competitive um, hashtags when we're talking about Instagram stories. Um, and I mean, I like, sometimes I'll have one visible, but I'll hide any other ones that I use. I just, I think when I see an Instagram story that's like hashtags everywhere, it just screams like, notice me, notice me. I'm trying to get, get this out there. So I either, I hold my finger down and I change the color of the hashtag and it kind of blends into the background or I take my finger on the hashtag and I make it really small and I hide it under something or I hide it under a, um, a sticker or a GIF. So um, 
So yeah, I mean, that's a personal preference, what you want to do. But personally, that's what I do. All right. Elizabeth, when someone, someone, follow, someone, someone beings follow, following you, should you automatically follow back? Um, that is also a personal preference. Um, I don't follow everybody back. Uh, you have to remember, if you follow them, they show up in your feed. Do you want them on your feed? Right. Um, and, there, you know, I always go over and I look at who it is. Is this a like minded person? Are they somebody in my tribe? Like on Twitter, I follow a lot of actors back. Yeah, especially if you leave me a nice comment, I click over. You're following me, I follow you back because I want you in my tribe, right? But click over if it's somebody that like, why Why is this Bitcoin person following me? Or like, what, you know, I don't know who this person is. We don't even seem to have like-minded views. They may just be following you to unfollow you. And so you following them back is not gonna help you at all. Um, so it's up to you. I only let people in that, you know, that love what I love or they do what I do, right? Okay. Holy questions, people. Is this going to be recorded? I can't believe I missed half. Um, yes, it, it should be here when we're done if the uh, YouTube gods are with us. I am scrolling up because it just bumped again. Okay. All right. Okay. Is it okay to have a profile on Instagram and Twitter if I'm not engaged with it? Or is it better not to have the account? Um, well, I actually suggest that you get a consistent username everywhere on all the major platforms. You don't consistently, ha you don't have to use all of them, but if you're not going to use it, then you need to tell us that you're not using it. Cause if you don't, we're gonna go over and be like, oh wow, this person isn't an active member on social media. They're not a team player, especially in the industry. But all you have to do is on Twitter, say you're on Instagram, but you're not releasing Twitter. You can pin a post there that says, hey guys, I don't party here much, but go find me on Instagram and then put your Instagram link in that post. And then you hit them. There's a little arrow, upside down arrow button on the top right of the post. And one of the choices is pin this post. And then that will pin it to the top of your feed. Okay. If you're really not using it, then put it in your bio too. Go find me on Instagram. Like you put it in your header. Let us know where we can find you. Okay. Uh, but do grab your name. Okay. And you just have Toad Ever here. So I don't know what your, your real name is. Maybe that's your last name. Okay. Um, Samita. Hi, Heidi. So proud of your work. Oh, thank you. Um, just a quick question. Can you two be sponsored like sponsored ads on Facebook and Instagram? You can run um, ads on YouTube, just like you can on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I don't suggest that you run if you're going to run ads on YouTube. It has been <laughs> over and over again, I have seen uh, with with clients and colleagues that when they run ads on their YouTube channel to their videos that it actually messes up their organic reach on YouTube. So they usually set up a second channel that they just use for ads. Okay. Um, and this is a whole, whole nother can of worms. Um, you can run Spencer ads on Facebook and Instagram, but I, I'm not sure, um, you are a doctor, so I'm not sure if you were a doctor or an actor or what, um, or what, but, um, or a teacher, but what are you running ads for? Because not all actors need to run Facebook ads. But if you have content, um, running ads may be important. If you're a comedian and, you know, very soon, hopefully you'll be able to tour again and you need to sell out shows. If you do musical theater, you may need to run ads to shows. So, yes, Facebook and Instagram sponsored posts could be very important, but you need a strategy for that. Um, I want to mention one thing. Um, uh, one of the courses in the summer social media sale guys that's going on till Saturday is called you created it now what and it's specifically for content creators I know we've had a couple questions about content um and it's the only class where I talk about Facebook ads and Instagram ads okay I talk ad strategy so if you're somebody who needs to get um ads on your content that is the class to uh to take because I talk organic strategy with posting and how that works with your ad strategy Okay, because there's a way to get ads for very cheap on Instagram and Facebook, if you know how the system works. Okay, so let me know, um, Sumita, I don't know uh, what, you know, what you want to run ads for. If it's just to boost your post all the time, there are better ways to get engagement as an actor. If it's for content, um, events, things like that, then yes, that can be an awesome, awesome thing. Awesome. Rhiannon, thank you so much, Heidi. That's really helpful. Oh, Rhiannon asked the question about LinkedIn. At this point, I do have a LinkedIn, but most of my connections are for my non-theater friends, so I haven't been using it much. It sounds like it might not be the best place then. Yeah, because, I mean, use it for, you know, friends and family, but not so much for work then. 
Okay. I would focus on some of the other platforms that actually you might be asked to um, use for your career. You might ask to do a story takeover. You might ask to, you know, um, even do an Instagram takeover on the grid or to live tweet, or you might have posting requirements and none of those are, are going to happen on LinkedIn. Okay. LinkedIn great for relationships, but not necessarily for something for your, for your career. Um, love that Rebecca. I don't know you love Rebecca. Well, I might, but um, I love you too. I love that name. <laughs> um, what if you don't feel like you're getting traction on any of the social media platforms? Honestly, I would, I would do a do over. I'd say do over and I'd pick one and I'd actually set up a system because the problem is a lot of us hopped on social media for playtime. We didn't have a system. We just started posting. We started like try to network, but we didn't really know what we were doing. We think we know how to grow, but we see our followers going down. It's because you don't have a system. And when we start then adding multiple platforms, we get overwhelmed. And now we don't have a system on three or four platforms. So Rebecca, I would suggest that you really sit down and say, okay, what is my number one platform? And how am I going to set up a system to grow, to network, to make strides for my career? Okay. And I don't know which ones you're on, um, but I can give you, you know, some suggestions. Just drop something further down. Um, okay. Tom, do you think that agents and managers are going to be needed in the future? If social media following can get you in the doors. They seem like they could be unnecessary middlemen. Well, no, because agents, they're, it's a totally different thing. Um, agents are going to get you auditions. Managers are going to help get you connections and also get you auditions, even though it's, technically what they do, not what they do, but they, they do. Um, they, you know, agents are going to negotiate contracts. It's totally, totally different thing. Um, and a following can get you in the door, but I always look at a following as like the icing on the cake, right? Um, yes. Sometimes you see auditions, like you have to have this many followers. Most of us are not for big projects, right? Um, most of the time you're, you know, people are getting called in for things. They're finding the people they want. And social media is like that that cherry on top. It's the thing that could be a deciding factor. If, you know, if one person, if they're both right for the role and one person has a following and one person doesn't. And a lot of times the other person's just not there. That's why you're seeing people like Jennifer Aniston, all these people who said they would never be on social media are doing it now because they need to. Right. Um, but no agents and managers, they're totally going to be needed. So it's a, that's a totally different, um, different, different thing, you know? Um, uh, ben, you're still here. Also. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, Mir, uh, Miraya, I think it is. That's a beautiful name. Mir, Miraya. Um, should actors start a YouTube channel, um, as an actor? Um, yes and no. Okay. This is a, <laughs> So it's a, not a controversial opinion, but there's a lot of articles out there from a while back that are like, every actor must have a YouTube channel. And I'm like, every actor doesn't need to have a YouTube channel. Every actor is not a creator. It, hands down, they're not. Um, I was an actor for 20 years. Um, I worked both, you know, I grew up in California. I went to NYU and then I was in New York acting. I had agents and managers on both coasts. I, I worked a lot. I even, I, I sing too. And but I'm not a creator. Like yeah, I am now because my YouTube channel, but for the most part as an actor, do I think that I would be building a YouTube channel for my content? I don't think so. So not, not every actor is a creator. Okay. Um, but there are different reasons an actor might have a channel. Um, every actor needs somewhere to house their video content. Okay. And I picked up this little apple juice to have somewhere now. Give me a second. All right. So every actor needs a place to house their content. Okay. So whether it's your reel or performance clips, um, if you, you know, if you are a multi hyphen or you're a singer, um, comedian, you might have performance clips, you might have interview clips, um, stuff from press. So every actor needs some kind of video platform to house these clips, right? That might be Vimeo, that might be YouTube. Um, but does every actor need a channel? Not necessarily. So I'm not sure. Um, uh, Mariah, if, if that's what you're, you know, are you just looking for a place for your reel? Are you actually looking to create a web series? Or there are a lot of actors that have grown huge channels, um, vlog style channels where they're talking to the camera, just like I do in my videos. And they're either educating or they're inspiring or they're taking us on their journey somewhere. Um, that's a great thing that you can do as an actor. Okay. So those are, there's different reasons an actor might need one. 
It's actually how I start my YouTube essentials class is we talk about, is it going to be a home base for your content? You know, are you going to be creating a web series um, content, like a web series or a short film and putting that on YouTube? Or are you going to be creating a vlog style channel? So those are really the three reasons an actor would have a channel. Okay. ST Moore says, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Kara Scott voice. So glad you're here. Um, Candy, LOO, decisions, decisions. Well, Candy, feel free to message me if you have questions about Rockstar versus Post Like a Boss. They're just very different. It just depends what your what your needs are, you know? Do you just want to focus on posting or do you want to focus on a lot of different things? <laughs> um, with that said, Post Like a Boss is actually my favorite class. Don't tell the other ones, but it's my favorite class. Um, um, Speak LA. Hey, Speak LA. I'm so glad. If you guys want a podcast to listen to, listen to Speak LA. The ladies there are awesome and they interview the best, best, best people. So if you see them in the chat, hey, speak LA girls. I don't know who's here. Which one of you guys are here with me now? <laughs> leave leave your link to your podcast right now um, down below. So she said, love what I what you said about the live tweeting. So good, so good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, yeah, live tweeting can be fantastic. And you don't, the thing is that my if you guys came late, you might not have heard. I have a, a British client who um, I made her live tweet. She was a guest star on a, a show. Um, last week and she sorry i'm gonna get comfortable i just had knee surgery last month so sitting is difficult for me for a long long periods of time so let me get comfortable um okay there we go much better um so this my my client uh was i made her live tweet she, she went from 1100 followers to over 5000 uh in a you know just a couple days um and she was guest starring on this major show but it, had she had she not live tweeted nobody would have found her like even though she was on the show but she was actively joining the conversation it was a collaboration really with the show even though she did it on her own you know she she did contact the the social media pr department just to make sure to see if they had any um photos she could share and that it was okay but they were like sure and what's great i didn't even talk about this talked about it on the live the other day um what happened was the producer personally wrote her um after the day that she I uh, did the live tweeting, thanking her for her performance, but also, and this was like the executive producer on the show, also thanking her for en her enthusiasm about the show and how, you know, uh, how wonderful it was that she was sharing it on Twitter, right? So guess what happens down the road when she is up for a role with that executive producer? Who do you think they're going to want to hire? Even, even though, you know, she has 5,000 now, somebody else might have more, but somebody with a bigger following might not be as active as her, right? So it's things like that. It shows you're a team player when you know how to use social media, guys. Okay. All right. Kara Scott voice. I love you. She's one of my Insta actors. Um, knowing that LinkedIn is more business-like, what about posting a picture of your self-tape setup so directors know you have a good setup for a quick turnaround? Would that be worth it? Yeah. I mean, it just LinkedIn, it's a little bit more businessy, but honestly, I think you, did you say picture? I say go for um, video. Video, when I'm on LinkedIn, um, the thing that always stands out in the feed and everything to me is media that moves, videos, because everyone is just posting text and photos there. And I would do video if you're going to do something like that, um, because we'll see your personality, we'll hear your voice because you do voiceovers, and, um, and then we'll see something moving and it will catch our eye. Okay, it's a great way to stand out on LinkedIn right now. Ben's TikTok, yes, please go look at Ben's TikTok. I do every day. <laughs> All right. Okay, Michael, acting channel on YouTube, clips and reel. Michael, honestly, if you just have your clips and your reel, you're not growing that channel. Like that's not a reason to grow. Um, if it's just your reel and some acting clips, you that is a house for your content that you send people there to go see those clips and the reel, or maybe you're embedding those on your website, but that's, you're not going to grow a channel if that's your only content. You got to think what's the audience. So who is going, you don't grow an audience around your, your reel, right? So that's, that's a, just a different type of channel. Um, you still need to optimize it. You still need to make those things look good that I told you about in the earlier um, part, but, but actual growth um, is not really as important when you're only putting a couple acting clips. Now you may add some other topics to that as well. Maybe we're gonna see some more behind the scenes things. Maybe we're gonna have a whole series that's just about, um, sorry, that's my warning. So I know what time I'm at. <laughs> um, maybe, you know, maybe there's something else you like in your life and um, that's gonna become a playlist. 
I have a recent client who was an actor and a stuntman, and now he's on his YouTube channel. He is now sh like showing us all these videos of him getting into like these super fast cars and doing these stunts, and it's so cool. And guess what? There is an audience for that on YouTube, and when and people are finding those videos of the stunt work and you know all, all this cool action stuff he's doing, then they're gonna go there and they're gonna find his reel and his performance clips. But but it's not the reel and performance clips that are gonna help grow his audience. Let me know if that makes sense, Michael. Okay. Um, if you really want to grow an audience around like your talents and, and acting clips, hopefully TikTok's going to stick around because that is the best place to do it right now, honestly, and fast. Because um, I, I mean, I, <laughs> if someone wants to hear me talk about social media on TikTok and I just got 600 followers like that, um, then obviously there's a place for you guys if you're acting. <laughs> Julie, does anyone know how to create an autoplay video right on the home page of YouTube? Can't seem to make it work so frustrating. An autoplay video, yes, that is what I told Michael about. It's called your channel trailer. And you're gonna go into, let me just make sure I can explain this right. You're gonna go into your customized channel. I'm just going to my YouTube channel. Um, it sounds funny because I'm on my YouTube channel but I'm going on my other computer. So you're gonna wanna click into your channel, Julia. <laughs> and let me turn my sound off because mine's going to autoplay. Um, and you're going to go into customize channel. Okay. And when you do that, one of your choices is it's going to come up for returning subscribers, new subscribers. You just hover and you can add a channel trailer right there. Okay. That is the, the one that's for returning subscribers, new visitors. And the new visitors one, it will autoplay. Got it. Okay, and Julie, if you need more help with your channel, my YouTube Essentials class is perfect. Um, Cher Sherry says, excited to work on the channel art. Yes, yes, Sherry is awesome. She's one of my clients and Sherry, I think you've taken all my classes. <laughs> I'm not sure, I may be wrong. Maybe not the content creator one. Um, Julia, homepage of your profile, not of YouTube. Can you tell me your profile where? His profile could be anywhere. Okay. All right. Indra, how do I get more followers on Twitter? Indra, weren't you on my live on Tuesday for backstage where I gave you a ton of ways? <laughs> I think you were. Um, on Twitter. Okay. I'm just moving my broken leg. It's not broken. It's just my knee for my knee surgery. All right. So let me look at the time. Okay, I am going to stay on for more than an hour because there's no way I'm going to get to all these questions. So I'm going to stay on longer. Um, let me just drop this in for you guys one more time. Because we had a couple people ask about some of the classes in the summer sale. If you guys came late, I'm just reminding you again because I know I'm going to get emails on Sunday saying I missed the summer sale or I didn't know about it. Can you extend it? And I don't do that. So, and I do the sale one time a year on all my summer, um, all my social media classes. So whether you want to learn Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, if you have content and you want to get more eyes on it, or um, I know there's one I'm missing, or you just want to focus on posting, there's a class for that. Um, and I just dropped the link there for you guys. Okay. Um, how do we get more followers on Twitter? That is a giant question that I'm going to speed through just because I have so many more. <laughs> um, and I'm almost positive you were on my live on Tuesday. Okay. So I'll give you the big, the big picture of how to grow Twitter followers. There's three major steps that have tons of little steps between them. The first step, you gotta optimize that first impression, right? Doesn't matter what platform, Twitter, anywhere. You don't have a good first impression, you're not gonna get followers, guys. Doesn't matter what you're doing. Optimize that first impression, figure out a posting plan. Especially on Twitter, you've got to know how to create shareable, awesome, retweetable post. If you guys go to my Twitter, I think I'm one of the few businesses out there that's actually still rocking Twitter. It's my favorite platform. <laughs> and I get shared. I get engagement on Twitter because I know how it works. And I know how to create a post that gets shared, that gets comments, that gets engagement. And it's so important because I literally grow a like-minded tribe all the time on Twitter because I know how to do this. Okay? Um, and it doesn't take much work because I already know exactly how to create these the shareable, readable, retweetable post. So Indra, <laughs> you're going to optimize that first impression. You're going to figure out how to create shareable, retweetable post, And then you need to engage with your target audience. OK, 
okay? Let me give you a couple tips on how to find that audience, but I don't want you to find that audience till you've cleaned up your channel and you figure out a posting system. Got it, Indra? Let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense for all of you guys, okay? <laughs> um, so usually your audience, whether it's on Twitter, we're talking about Twitter right now, or Instagram, your audience on social media is going to do what you do. So they might be an actor, they might be someone in the industry, or love what you love. Love what you love means that we're not just talking about being an actor on social media. We're also talking about a couple other things that help us tell our story. Maybe it's your life as a mom. Maybe it's that you love dogs. You love rescuing dogs. Whatever it is for you, right? You could be a history lover. You could be a Disney lover. I have clients that are all of these things. Maybe, maybe you're really eco-conscious. Maybe that is part of your story that you tell online. So the people that are, you're going to grow your tribe with are going to be people who do what you do in the industry. Or love what you love. Love these other things that you might be talking about. They might also like acting too. But <laughs> um, or if you're a working actor, they, they might be fans of the show you're on or in. Basically, those are the three questions you ask to figure out what the target audience is for your, your um, page. We're talking about Twitter, but it also works on Instagram. So I'm going to say them again. People who do what you do, people who love what you love, are people who are fans of the shows that you're on or in. Okay? And then we need to engage with them, Indra. So that's step three. Optimizing first impression, knowing how to create posts, and then finding and engaging with that target audience. Whether it's just engaging with their, their conversations by liking, commenting, all different ways we get on their radar that I kind of referred to earlier, or collaborating, or live tweeting, right? Um, that's the general three-part uh, way to grow a following, okay? Um, if you want a very specific way, that is the social rockstar challenge. I want to keep going on questions or I, if I'm sitting here talking about growing or following your Twitter, it will be the next hour. And I know people are here for all different things. Robert, thank you so much. Such great content, your live sessions. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for being here many, many times. So awesome. Um, Okay, I think it's Sergey. Um, should actors have two separate social media profiles, one professional and the other personal? Um, it's, it's kind of two different questions that you're asking. Actors may have, if we're talking Facebook, they may have a personal Facebook profile and a Facebook page, so the professional page. Now on that page, we need to see something that is personal besides just acting from time to time, but that somebody might have both, right? Um, but in terms of the actors that I get as clients that, they come to me and they're like, oh, well, I made this personal Instagram and then I have this public Instagram as an actor. I'm going to be honest. Nothing is private on social media. So that private account you made on Instagram, people are finding. And also as an actor, who are your friends in the business? Other actors, <laughs> right? So which one are you inviting them to? The private account or the public account? Right? So there's no public and private when it comes to having two profiles. Plus, every person I know as a client that has done that is overwhelmed because they're like, well, I'm not sure what I should post to this one or in this one. The only time I really see that working is if you have like a private Instagram and it is just for like your grandma, your aunt, your brother and sister, and you're sharing baby photos. But it's literally like for 10 people. But other than that, um, and it's under a different name, obviously. Um, other than that, what I think you need to do is you need to create your public brand as a public figure which you are if you're here and you're an actor or an artist. So this is something I do that starts with every client I work with. Every online class I have has an exercise called putting the me in your social media. And I have, I, you know, have my clients and my students go through this long list of questions and we figure out what makes them them, right? What makes you differ from everybody else? What makes you you, um, your strengths, your weaknesses, your hobbies, your interests, and a lot of them are outside acting, right? And then we go through and we cross off anything on that big list that you're not comfortable in sharing, okay? I call these your nunyas. These are things that if you're in an interview and someone asks you about, you'd be like, none of your business, right? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense, okay? Um, so that's what you need to do. That's what you need to do, Sergey. You need to start with, who are you? What are you not comfortable posting about? And then what's left is your story that you're going to tell on social media in your public account that you're going to grow. Make sense? Okay. Elizabeth, five is such a great age. Yeah, she's she's just the best. She's the absolute best. She's the cutest thing ever. Um, she's just, I call her, her name's Tallulah, but I call her Tallulah Sunshine. She's just like a bundle of positive light. Yes, she gets 
you know, a little testy. She's five, but she's, she's just a, yeah, it's the perfect age. Um, Mabel, you're welcome. <laughs> wow. I'm seeing how many questions we have now because you guys are referring to something I talked about 30 minutes ago. Um, doo -doo -doo. Mary, pros and cons of using a hashtag or, um, or username on Twitter to shout out a person or project. Um, well, obviously, if you're going to shout out a person, I'd use the username. Um, you know, if you are in, and even the project, you're going to want to use the username so you show up in their feed. Um, you know, if it's an account for a project, uh, you're not going to show up if you just use the hashtag unless people are searching the hashtag. Um, now, if it's a live tweeting situation, like I talked about earlier, you're going to want to use the hashtag, but you might also be using a combination of usernames for the different people on the project. Can you guys see that giant fly that was flying around my office? <laughs> I think he's going to hang out. Maybe he has a question. All right. Um... Okay, Leyland, I've been looking into Instagram accounts with thousands of followers and they seem fake, like one post and 22,000 followers. They probably are fake. <laughs> um, the other alternative, I mean, one, I don't know why someone would just leave one post. Um, sometimes people do decide to rebrand, do something new, um, totally change over their uh, what they're doing on Instagram and they'll like delete old posts. I don't necessarily suggest that unless it's actually like a brand check and you can get in trouble for them, you know? Um, so you might go and somebody has a lot of followers but they have 12 posts. It could be that they just deleted old posts or archive them, but that sounds pretty fake to me, Leyland. I wouldn't be a part of their stuff. Holy questions, okay. I'm gonna do like speed round, guys. I'm gonna stay on longer than an hour. Actually, let me just rate my husband so that Actually, I'm not going to write him because maybe my daughter will come in and she'll say hi to you. <laughs> then you can see her mermaid tiara. <laughs> All right. Hey, Edward. You're welcome. Yes, change your link. <laughs> you just got a free mini consult because I happen to look at your page. Adele, hi. Thank you for doing this. I've been watching your TikToks. It's been so useful. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, Adele. And I recognize your face too on TikTok. Um, I've been doing, I've been broadening out on TikTok a little bit more um doing a little bit more broader marketing stuff than just social media so i'll be talking resumes and stuff next week so all right okay all right <laughs> ben thank you <laughs> uh, miriam i'm feeling you you're just awesome oh thank you thanks miriam thank you for being here okay thank you heidi just had an aha okay great awesome well that's why we're here now i'm really guys um, and like I said, I'm going to just stay on, even though it's a, or an hour, I'm just going to answer questions. So, um, you know, if you had an aha, that's great. And do the work. The biggest thing I'm seeing because I'm going live so much for backstage and SAG and all these places is that I see a lot of you guys attending a lot of the, the lives and then you follow me on social media and I go over and I look and you're not doing the work. Right. And I know it's sometimes it's because you're watching a lot of free stuff and we don't always follow through through when things are free. Right. Um, my students, my clients, they follow through because they're paying, right? But make sure, you guys, if you have an aha moment, um, like I see right here, do it. Do the work. Make it happen, okay? Um, don't just take it in. You got to do the work to see results on social media, guys. You really do. I don't have a big following on Instagram and Twitter and now my YouTube channel um, because I didn't do the work, because I didn't show up every day and post and learn from my mistakes and try again. You know, that is how you learn, okay? Okay, let's see. Holly Hill Films. Hi, Heidi, everyone. How important is Facebook for attracting casting directors to hashtags or usernames get their attention there? Um, Cassandra is your name. Um, what we talked about earlier for attracting casting directors, um, it's not the best place in terms of networking, right? When we're looking at platforms that are the best for networking, we're looking at those platforms earlier. I talked about interest-based platforms. Actually, I'll do it this way. Interest-based platforms, because these are them, Twitter and Instagram, versus platforms like Facebook and, um, and LinkedIn um, for meeting people, right? Um, just having a Facebook page isn't the best place to network. Yeah, you can maybe use groups, but I know a lot of groups don't let um, Facebook pages in. Um, so... So it's not the Facebook isn't the best place for growing your network with other casting directors unless it's people you already know. OK, so if you have a Facebook profile and you're using that as like a mini club, 
for the pa casting directors you already know and the people in the business you already know to stay top of mind with them, that is great. And there's ways you can do that and grow those relationships. But in terms for new people, nope, you need these guys right here. You need these platforms, okay? Um, and actually, yes, this is a huge thing, um, Cassandra. Do hashtags work on Facebook? Well, yes, actually, like four years ago, um, Facebook introduced the hashtag feed. Um, you know, hashtags actually had a click through where you could go see other posts. Um, they said it was going to help boost organic reach, but it really didn't. But apparently it will now. Now, um, this was an announcement three days ago. I put an announcement in my Facebook group about um, about Facebook hashtags. Apparently it will help boost reach on pages. Okay, and you'll be able to go in, you'll be able to search hashtags um, and find other like-minded accounts and stuff. So, so yes, use hashtags on on Facebook even more now. Okay, all right. But do I think that's going to get their casting director's attention? No. How you get a casting director's attention and how you build relationships is being very targeted about who you want to know and getting in their circles and getting on their radar. You guys have to know most casting directors are not going online and like. Hmm, I want to look up working actor and that's how they're finding talent. Not really. No. If you're a child actor, yes, they do scout child actors. And they do, uh, it's very common to, uh, to scout special talents and stuff on social media. But are they actually like going down like the actors of Instagram hashtag looking for people? No. Okay. How it works is you need to join their circles, their conversations, add value to their conversations. All right. Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. So I know you guys can still hear me and see me. If you guys have never gone live, even though there's all these people and all these comments, it's sometimes the most lonely experience because you can't hear an audience. You can't, you're just talking to yourself in your really warm office because I have to turn my air off uh, when I go live. And it's a hundred degrees here in New York. So if I'm sweating, that's why. All right. All right. I brought or um, apple juice today because I knew I'd be on for a long time. Um, Alex, do you think TikTok is a good platform for actors? I've been told you may be viewed more as an influencer rather than a professional actor. Thanks. Um, I, I actually think it's, a, it, have you spent any time there? Go over, spend some time there. There's actually some fantastic actors that I that are now influencers and they're professional actors. And there's actors on Broadway and all sorts of people that are super talented. It's literally like, it's what they've done is given you a stage to perform. It's absolutely amazing. I'm kind of jealous because I used to be an actor for years. I used to sing and TikTok, I go on there and I hear people singing every day. I was like, oh man, I wish this was around 10 years ago. People are literally getting discovered for their talents and they're not just being viewed as it. There's nothing different. I'm going to switch this for you, Alex. An actor is an influencer. Now it's it, five years ago. There were people getting cast because they had numbers and they had never acted. Nowadays, there's actors getting cast that just built up their audience and they're talented and they have a social media presence. We're in a totally different time. That conversation doesn't exist as much anymore because actors are game with social media now. It didn't happen five years ago. So if you have an audience on TikTok and there's people now with like hundreds of thousands of people following them that are actors or millions of people um, for their talents, you're gonna be viewed as a professional actor and an influencer. Um, you know, if you're talented, obviously. And obviously if you're gonna go, you're, you're not gonna be viewed as a professional actor as if, if you show up for an audition and you don't have a resume or a headshot or anything like that, you're gonna need those things. But a lot of the people that I see doing that, they are people that have that, right? Um, so if you're talented, Alex, yeah, go for it, go for it, okay? That's some of the most creative people I've ever seen are on that platform right now. Um, I think the New York Times says that it, TikTok brings back, uh, is bringing back the fun to social media, and I couldn't agree more. So, all right. Um, Leyland, why are some Instagram posts have a huge space before the hashtag? It's so annoying, but it must be a reason. I'm guessing you mean like, is there are people putting like dots and pushing the hashtags down to the bottom? If that's what you're talking about, they're doing it so it's just, when you see a post and it's like a mass amount of hashtags, it just is kind of ugly. It, takes away from what the post actually says. So they're trying to keep the caption that you see before the, you know, before it bumps, you know, to the dot, dot, dot. Um, they're trying to keep it away from the hashtags. It just makes it cleaner. Some people also put their hashtags in the first comment immediately after they post and it does the same thing. Okay. I, I, ironically, most, I, I find it annoying when I see a bunch of hashtags. So <laughs> I guess it depends who you are, you know? 
Elizabeth says, thank you, Heidi. That was helpful. You're welcome. I've answered so many questions. I actually don't remember what yours was now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, Felix from Madrid. Okay. Mary, what's the best way to repost something from someone's story to your story if they were not the author? Should you go to that user and share from their account? Yes, yes. I would go to the, uh, you know, click on the post and, the, and, you know, find out who the original person is and, and share it from there and mention them, okay? Um, Blacksman, I have no idea what platform you're talking about. Do we guess, get less likes for a public account? Um, public in what way? Do you mean a business? Um, do you mean a business account? What, you know, what do you mean? Let me know. Hold on. I'm hearing from my husband. Okay. I think my daughter's going to come say hi. She's going to be so excited. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, all right, so let me know, Lexman, what you mean for a public account. Um, just so you know, Instagram publicly came out and busted a lot of myths. Um, oh, when was this? Like two months ago about, um, if we're talking about Instagram, um, about the algorithm, about how things show up in the feed. And one thing they busted because people had said, oh, you know, business accounts get less, um, you know, aren't shown in much in the feed. And they said, nope, right now, at least for right now, um, whether you have a regular account on Facebook, on Instagram, whether you have a business account or a creator account, they are all tr created equal. Okay. Um, so that is fact right now. And if anyone wants to hear more about Instagram algorithm stuff, we'll talk about it. Okay. Wow. You guys are awesome. So many questions. Whew. I'm going to keep going. I'm just gonna move my chair over a little in case we get a little visitor. She's never, I don't think she's ever popped on a live before, but she's so interested in coming on video that we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Maybe she'll be able to answer your questions. You guys might not know my daughter has had a viral video on my Facebook profile and has over a million views on it. And it was like, seriously, it was just supposed to go to my family because the, the video was too long. It was her singing Earth, Wind and Fire, Serpentine Fire in the back of our car when she was three. Um, but yeah, million views on this on this video crazy town um all right let me answer questions okay i hear somebody um okay hi Heidi. you have a question about child actors on social media is there anything i need to do different as a minor or can i just do everything the same and just be careful on what's going on there are different things and actually I, what i'm going to do for you is um i want to send you a lot a lot of strategy is going to be the same but there's just certain privacy things that you need to do different and you need to be aware of um go to my youtube channel and i have a video called how to keep your child actor safe on social media it's a topic that's very near and dear to my heart i was a child actor i have a beautiful child here that wants to meet you guys you want to come in here um so uh so go watch that video you want to say hi <laughs> this is Tallulah. this is my little girl you about ready to go in the pool the little kitty pool outside to say pool. <laughs> Who is that? Who's on your crown? Um, little mermaid. Little mermaid. All righty. Okay. Well, thank you for visiting. <laughs> Bye, honey. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> so there you go. That's my little girl. <laughs> That's my everything. <laughs> All right. Who wants to be me? And has her little client calls with magic camera in the other room pretending to be mommy. Um, let's see. All right. So, um, Ariri, I think is your name. Go watch that video because there's a lot of privacy settings that are important, not only to your child's account, but if you're on Facebook, there's ways people can link, you know, could find out who a parent is and can get information about where you live. So I cover all of that in that, that video. Okay. But, but for the most part, a lot of the stuff, um, in some of my classes, like my Insta actor class, I've had a lot of child actors take it with their parents. Of course, a lot of their parents are taking it for them. Um, and I do, I do, talk specifically in class when something pertains more to a child actor than an adult actor. Even when I talked about that, putting the me in your social media exercise about let's figure out who they are. Obviously the questions you're going to ask a child might be a little bit different and how we tell a child's story is going to be a little different than an adult. Okay. So that video will help you. And you know, like if you're interested in any uh, classes that are in my summer sale, um, just message me on Instagram or on Twitter. I'll let you know what's most appropriate for child actors. Okay. Um, Kimberly Curtis, I think you were on my live for backstage the other day. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm in the process of updating all my social media platforms. Is it beneficial to have a site yet? I have the domain name saved. I just don't feel that I have enough items to create it yet. You mean a website. Um, 
if you if you're not ready, don't worry about it yet. You can always do a one page landing page that maybe has your um, you know has all the important things like your resume um, might have your reel on there. It might have um, your headshots in one convenient place. Um, you can have that and you can add as you go. Okay. Um, but if you're just, if you're in the process of updating your social media, you can also just focus on your social media and add your website when you're ready. What's really great is that you did get your domain name and that's awesome. Cause trust me, if your career takes off, you do not want to have um, someone grabbing your name. Oh, it's the worst thing ever. Okay. Um, all right. I'm just going to keep on going. All right, Felix, who would be better as a manager? This doesn't sound like a social media question, so I'm going to go really fast through it. I really just want to answer social media questions, guys. Um, who would be better as a manager, a family member, such as a brother or your father, or signing with a manager who knows what your acting potential is? Well, uh, there, you know, as a child actor, your mom might be your manager or your momager, as they call it. But a manager is going to help guide your career. A manager might help you get an agent. A manager might help you meet people in the business that you need to meet. And a family member is not going to help do that. So if you're a child actor, you may, your, one of your parents may be managing your career um, to keep you safe, obviously. But you, you know, a manager is different. If you're going to sign with a manager who actually knows the business. Okay. Um, a brother or sister, they're not going to, they're not going to know that. Okay. Um, so those are two different things really. Um, Adele, what would you recommend uploading on TikTok? Um, acting funny bits or something else? Well, what do you do? <laughs> you know, are you funny? Um, you know, are you funny? Are you more serious? Like what, what do you do? Do you sing? Um, you know, really on TikTok and I tell you are on TikTok because I, I know you see that. Um, look at the trending sounds. See what other people are doing. Find other like-minded accounts like you and see what they're doing and use some of the similar sounds. Um, but really, it should align with like what kind of roles do you want to play? What kind of, you know, what makes you tick? You know, let's let's see your point of view and, um, you know, and, and how you view the world, especially if you're doing comedy. All right. Indra, you were there. Okay, Indra, you were at my my Twitter talk for backstage on Tuesday. Then you go back and watch that. It's on their channel. And I gave you tons of tips. <laughs> or if you want a deeper dive, like I said, the social rock star challenge will give you a step-by-step -step system. Um, just as Ben, who we've seen here. Um, let's see. Hi, Vanessa. Um, is there a way to see who your audience is on YouTube using analytics to see if you have a specific tribe so you know the type of content you like? Yes. Let me hop into my... My channel right now. Analytics are your friends everywhere, but especially on YouTube. We can go into analytics and you can see like all sorts of information. Go into your audience tab and you can see now when your viewers are on YouTube. They'll tell you when. They'll tell you what countries they're from. They'll tell you how watch, you know, how long they watch. They'll tell you their age and their gender. They'll, you know, they'll tell you their languages. So there's all sorts of information that we can get um, just from our analytics. Okay. Um, so that will help. Also, you want to also, when you go into your channel analytics on YouTube, um, you want to go and you want to see your top videos. So every month I go and I say, okay, what are my top videos? Um, sometimes it's because I put them out that month. Sometimes it's because like I have a username video, 15 creative usernames, which is one of my top ranking videos for two years now. <laughs> It just consistently ranks or my Instagram stories tutorial ranks for all of uh, actually ranks for Instagram and Instagram stories on YouTube, not just for actors. So um, so, yeah, go in and um, look at uh, look at your analytics and see um, what are people watching. We can click into each video, too, and see what did people search for to even find this video. It's pretty awesome, Vanessa. So what happens is, so you create a video on a certain topic. I go in and see what did people search for to find this, if it's been showing up in search. And sometimes it's a slightly different title. What I sometimes do is I double down on that video topic and I create a second video that's on the exact question that people are typing in. And I'm ranking for that one too now. Make sense? So then now two, two of my videos are showing up for the same topic. Um, and I'm more likely to show up on page one if I already have one ranking there. OK, your analytics are like your best friend on YouTube. OK, um, let's see. All right. Vanessa, I'm just going to ask um, answer just a couple because I have tons of questions. I'm trying to just answer one question from everybody. But 
feel free to post it again at the bottom and I'm going to keep going, try to at least get one of everyone. And if you guys are watching the replay, which I know is nobody right now, but if you're watching this on replay um, and you have questions, I'll be checking this video for the next couple days. So if you have questions, make sure you put them in the comments below. Um, okay. Or if I totally miss your comment in the stream, put it in the comments below afterwards. Okay. Um, Vanessa, does it make sense to post a short teaser of a longer video to promote or drive them to YouTube or Instagram? How long is the right amount of time? Okay. Um, are we still, are we talking about LinkedIn? Well, let's talk about LinkedIn, but it could be anywhere, really. Um, yes, a teaser can be fantastic to promote your YouTube video or your IGTV video. Um, and Vanessa, I think you have YouTube Essentials. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think you got it a couple months ago. Um, but in YouTube Essentials, I, I actually show you, this is so cool. This is a new bonus video in that YouTube class. I show you how I edit my YouTube videos, guys. I, um, I, I hop into iMovie. I show you how I film them. I show you how I edit them, which you guys can totally use these um, tools if you want to edit any kind of um, video. If you want to edit um, self tapes, this bonus video would be fantastic for you. So um, I show you how to, you know, how to shoot it, how to edit the YouTube video and like with easy equipment, guys. I'm not, you know, none of my videos are shot on anything but this guy right here, right? <laughs> um, so I show you how to edit and I'm moving. I show you how I make my teasers there, Vanessa. I show you the the tools I use, everything. Okay, so if you go onto my Instagram, you see I have short uh, teasers all the time for my videos that I put I put on you know other platforms as well. I put them on Facebook. I'm not as active on LinkedIn, so I don't put them there, but they would work for LinkedIn as well. Um, but I show you that in the class. So remind me if you, I'm almost positive you have that class. Um, so um, Leyland, I stopped Twitter. I'm just going to say when it got political. Well, that is actually a bad thing for you. I hate to say, because you control what you see in your feed. And most people don't realize on Twitter, we can mute words in our notifications and our feeds. We can decide the conversations we want to see. I run my Twitter on desktop purposely. You know why Leyland and everyone, because I can control that. I just go to my notifications and I just go to my Twitter list and then I don't see any political crap at all. Okay. If I click over to see politics on Twitter, it's because I've chosen to, I see a trend and I go there. But other than that, I am there for business. I'm there to, you know, hang out with you guys. So many of you follow me on Twitter. I'm there, um, to be there for clients. Um, and I can avoid all that. You control what you see, Leyland. You control what you see on all of your social media. If you know how to set up your bookmarks, if you run your most of your social media from desktop, you're in full control. It's something I definitely show you in, in my classes. Um, you have to know when you start using social media as a business for your acting career, you have to set systems in place to help you run it like a business. Okay, guys. Um, so, you, you know, and one of those things is I have my bookmarks. I talked about this in a recent live. Um, my bookmarks on my desktop, on my Chrome browser. I have one called social to do's. I go there first thing every morning. I have Twitter list then Twitter notifications, YouTube dashboard, YouTube comments. And then I send you within my Facebook group and um, various places. I have these in order. So I know exactly what I need to do every day. These are my bookmarks on my, you know, on my computer. Um, but also you can see, I said, Twitter list, Twitter notifications. I don't go to the feed. <laughs> I don't go to trending topics or anything like that. Anything that they force me to see on my phone. Okay. Um, so try that out. All right. Okay. Holy questions. I am going to try to answer them. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. It just jumped around again. So let me find where I ended so I don't miss anybody. A rare, a rare. I wish I was able to watch this at the end. Oh yeah. When you know, feel better with your headache. Um, and it, if the YouTube gods are with us, this will be on my channel afterwards. Okay. Hey Marla, that's okay that you're late. The replay will be here when we're done, okay? And you can ask a question now. Okay. Um, okay. Edward, corrected the website link. Thanks so much, no problem. Is posting my slideshow video with background music of a recent trip a good way to begin showing one of my non-acting interests? I think you're talking about Instagram. Um, it doesn't necessarily, I mean, if, if you mean slideshow, slideshow video, um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Um, uh, 
you don't, it doesn't necessarily, it can be a video. Um, you can also use, um, I'm just kind of guessing because I don't know exactly from your question. Um, there are a lot of features on Instagram. This is why, Edward, you need to watch my Instagram stories tutorial, the free one on my YouTube channel. There's a carousel post feature on Instagram where you can post up to 10 photos and videos and kind of tell a story through your pictures, right? And tell a story in your caption. You know, don't just post the slideshow, make sure that you are telling us a story in the caption. You know, what happened? when you went on that recent trip, okay? Um, people forget that Instagram isn't just a photo sharing platform. It is a storytelling platform, okay? You need to tell stories through the videos and the photos that you post, okay? So make sure, Edward, if you're gonna post that, it's not just the kind of a slideshow. We need to know the story behind that. Um, and that's where a lot of actors get stuck with our captions. You know, think about like, who is in this photo and why are they important to me? Um, you know, can you relate the, you have a trip here, but, you know, maybe it relates, to, you can relate it to something in your childhood or your younger self. You know, where was that trip? Was it to something, a place where you grew up? Um, what words describe the photo? Or can you, maybe you're going to ask us to describe the video or the photo in a few words. There's so many ways we can take the caption um, and the post to tell a story. Okay. Um, even just thinking, how does a video make me feel? And then writing a caption and telling a story that way. All right. Um, we have a whole like lesson and guide on captions in Instactor called Captions That Connect. So, all right. Sergey, thanks for answering my question and no problem. Um, okay. Koila, I think is your name. Hi, Heidi, I have a question about Instagram account. I'm a Russian actress, but I want to work internationally. So is it probably better to make another one English only speaking account? Um, are you talking about having two languages? Um, well, it really comes down to, I have a lot of, I have a lot of clients and students that they speak two languages and they might work in different countries. Like um, I have a client who is, uh, works in America, but she's also a Mexican actress. So she actually, she has an audience that's split. Right now, if your audience is just in Russia, then you need to speak the language that your audience speaks. Now, if they also speak English, you know, your audience speaks English there, then you may be able to split the caption and have it be both. Um, but what language you're speaking always needs to reflect your audience. You don't want to turn away your audience. Um, I don't, it, having two accounts sounds like a whole lot of work, especially if you are building a career there and then now you're going to build a second, what's going to be separate from the two pages. So I think you need to find a way to figure out maybe you're going to have your captions in a couple of different languages. Um, um, or just have it be Russian for now. And when you make the move, you can, you can always change it. Okay. Um, all right. Thanks, Marianne, for joining me. I know I'm going way over an hour, but I wanted to make sure I got to all these questions. I did not expect so many questions. Um, all right. Okay. Marla, we did, Marla has a question. We did, I know you came late. We did talk a little bit about this earlier, but advice for getting more people to engage with your post and, um, and YouTube videos. Um, those are two totally different topics. <laughs> Let me get a sip of my coffee and then I will answer. All right. I'm going to give you a simple one for Instagram and um, I'm also going to have some apple juice to get some energy. Mm. Okay. So Instagram, most of social media, Marla, you got to make your post a conversation, right? That is how you're going to get more engagement. Okay. Um, they've got to be more like a telephone conversation, not just a TV blasting at people. Okay. You need to include call to actions. Um, Whenever you create a post, what do I want them to see? How do I want them to feel? What do I want to make them do? That's your call to action. It's going to get them to engage. Okay, it's something I dive into in Instactor. Um, um, YouTube videos, how, depending, it depends on what type of videos. Like if you're talking about the videos that I create, I have a very specific um, recipe that I follow every single time I do a video. I even follow it when I go live because you have to know a lot of people when you go live um, are seeing the replay. Okay, so there's a very specific recipe that I follow and it's something that I do teach in YouTube Essentials for Actors. I actually can't believe I give it away because it's something I use every single time I do a video. Um, so when you're making videos, you, you know, I'll give you the first couple of things you need to do. The first thing you need to do, Marla, is you need to have a hook. Okay, that hook needs to grab us in. What is your YouTube video about? You know, people decide in two seconds whether they want to watch a YouTube video. Same thing for a live. You'll notice if you ever see me go live, you know, once we know we're live, YouTube, there's always a delay. But once I know I'm live, I have that sentence that I say, here's what we're going to learn. 
I'm going to teach you how to grow your Twitter for your acting career. Or today, I'm going to answer all your social media questions that you have as an actor. That's the hook. It's so people know, oh, I'm in the right place. I want to learn that. But we have to tell them that right away. I don't introduce myself right away. I tell them the hook and what they're going to learn, okay? Um, then after that, um, then you introduce yourself and your, cha your channel. You might have a little branding intro for your, for your channel on YouTube. Um, but that's fast, 10 seconds or less. You don't wanna lose them, okay? Then the next thing um, I do is I include some kind of call to action to get people to subscribe, right? Um, to get them to engage, maybe to like the video, to answer a question. And then I start delivering the content. But just more like, go watch one of my YouTube videos. Um, you'll see that I have all sorts of calls to action, just like I do on Instagram or else or my stories, to get people to engage. You can't just assume somebody is going to engage with your, your post, your video anywhere on social media just because they like it. You need to ask for that engagement, okay? Let me know, Marla and everybody, if that makes sense about engagement, is that sometimes you have to get them to stop and engage. So give me a hell yeah, a thumbs up in the comments, guys. All right. So that's a big topic, Marla. Um, so I gave you a couple things for a little bit more engagement. Also, it, for your YouTube videos, okay? And like I said, the hook is everything because I'm not going to stick around and engage if you didn't you didn't tell them up front what they're going to learn, okay? Um, Adele, awesome. Can't wait. I'm not sure actually what um, you're responding to, but I can't wait either. <laughs> um, Koila, perfect. Ryan, would you recommend using a website that has links to other sites, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook? Yes. Um, you should always be linking to your social media from your website and your website to your social media. Okay. Um, hey, hey, Kareen uh, Rogan. Uh, I think it's Kareen. Um, I know who you are. I just don't know who's Corinna Green, but I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Awesome. Hey, Jay Horace Black. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad I stayed on longer because I may not have seen you. Um, Vanessa, if you currently aren't on TikTok, is there still a way to see access your videos where you discuss the types of Wix, Wix templates? Yeah, actually, let me just drop the link. You should be able to see it. Oh, TikTok. Um, slash marketing for actors. Let me see if I can get it for you. Okay, I think this will help you, Vanessa. Okay, so you should be able to see them. Um, all right, you're welcome, Vanessa. All right, Candy, I'm scared of going live. Don't be scared of going live, and here's why. Because I used to be scared of going live. I've never publicly talked about this, actually. Any of my colleagues, my friends know I went back, I, I used to go live back with like Periscope, Facebook Live. I've been doing this forever now. Um, and live is something I feared. I'm a perfectionist. And um, if I can go live as many times with the thousands and thousands of people I've gone <laughs> live with now over the years, but also just in the last three or four months, um, you can go live, Candy. You need a plan. OK, you need an outline. You need to know what the tech is, because half that's half the battle is knowing like what buttons you need to push. Where do I put my description and all that? And actually, Candy, that might help you make your decision because Post Like a Boss has a going live um, bonus. It's only in Post Like a Boss. So <laughs> that might help you. All right. All right. Um, OK. Hi, Taylor. Hi, Samantha. I might be getting here to the end. So that's great. And says really hot upstate as well. Yeah. And I'm actually slightly out of the city, um, a little north. It is hot and humid today. Ooh. I'm going to be happy when I can turn this air conditioner back on. Ah. OK. Oh, this is when my daughter came in. Love the tiara. Awesome. I'll tell her that you loved it. Um, all right. Sorry, I'm just looking for questions. There's a lot of stuff. My daughter took over the chat. <laughs> um, okay. And sorry if I missed your questions, guys. I'm, I'm just scrolling through everything. Ah. Okay. Oh, my God. So many things there. Uh, okay, it was Instagram public account and meant less engagement on it due to the algorithm. So that was perfect last month. So no, you won't get less engagement. All accounts are created equal on Instagram, at least for right now. Um, okay. All right, beautiful daughter. Oh, thank you. She's, oh, what you don't see is her hair goes down to here. She's like a beautiful princess. I cannot, I've, I've, I'm in trouble when she's 16. Um, 
Okay, perfect, Vanessa. You have YouTube Essentials. Perfect. Then, then that is there for you. So yeah, check that bonus out. It I just I just it's a brand new bonus about a month ago, two months ago. Um, and I'll show you how to edit on iMovie. It'll show you how I make all my teasers. It's like I've had people that just took the course recently. They're like, oh my god, that bonus video is worth the price of the class. Like, which right now is really pretty cheap anyway. So, <laughs> all right, guys. So let me know if you have any other questions because my feed is not moving anymore. And that may be that you guys are, have no more questions. Um, especially people who haven't asked, let me know if you have any more questions. I'm going to stick on for just a couple more minutes. Um, so then I can turn my air conditioner back on <laughs> and thank you for joining me. This was, I was only going to pop on for an hour. We're at an hour and 35 minutes. Um, please let me know if you have any questions about the summer social media sale. Like I said, this happens one time a year. It's done on, um, Saturday at midnight. And unless something weird happens with the internet or my, you know, my site exploding, like I won't extend it. <laughs> which hopefully won't happen. So, um, so yes, that will be ending on Saturday. Okay. Oh, I see a question. Great. Um, oh, of course I say it's the last question. I've got a bunch now. Uh, Mary, I used to like sharing my Instagram post to Facebook, but once I converted to a business account, it created a Facebook business page and I only have to option to post to that page. True. Can I change it? Um, yes, actually they just changed that now. Now you actually don't have to have a Facebook page to have an Instagram account. I don't know if it's rolled out to everybody yet, but it's been a new change. Um, you uh, go into your Facebook page and unlink your Instagram account. You can just do that from your settings, go to settings. And then there's like Instagram is one of the tabs on your page, um, and unlink it. And then you should have the choice to not link it when you go back if you want. Okay. Um, so that should fix the problem, I think. So you should, should be able to change, but you have to unlink it first. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Vanessa for LinkedIn, is there any type of video content you were just creating? And when that, it depends on what you do. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're posting no matter whether they're videos, whether they're, um, no matter what your post content is, it always comes from you. So um, it depends what you do. It depends what your niche is. Um, that's going to reflect the content you put there. Okay. Um, so I'm sorry, I can't get more specific, but it really depends who you are. You know, um, if we have connections with recruiters, agents, video could be a good way to stay on the radar, but the wrong video could be annoying. Yeah. Well, you're going to need to make who, who is your audience on LinkedIn? Who's your audience? Go look at your, you know, go look at all your connections who are they and make content for them, you know, cause yes, to an, to the wrong audience, it will be annoying. Right. Um, it's why I always speak to actors. I, I work with, I actually have private clients. I probably have just as many business clients as actors now. Now most of the businesses are within the arts, but you know, I speak, when I speak, I speak to actors. Cause if I try to speak to everybody, it's confusing and it might be annoying. Right. Um, so Yes, Vanessa, if you want to grow an audience there, if you want to really tap into people, you know, to get an engagement, you got to speak to one audience. Um, thank you, Kuro, for being here. Um, Marla, how do we know if we have a good first impression on our Instagram? Um, you watch my videos on it. <laughs> Um, I saw you actually did tag me in a YouTube video to look at your first impression. Um, when I, my call to action, that video is, you know, put your link down below so everyone can take a look. I can't go and look at everybody's um, first impression because that's what I do with my clients. Um, I do audits with clients. Um, I do that. If Marla, my Insta actor class is on sale right now and there are, it's, you get direct access to me over um, direct message. And so after you finish mo module one and you clean up your first impression, um, well, modules one and two, when we talk about that, I go look at it. So that's how you know if you have a good first impression. <laughs> but um, do you, Marla, just ask yourself, you know, do you, if I go there, would I know who you are, what you do, what you love, what you stand for? Um, does your bio give us a clear indication of, you know, what you're posting about? Do your highlights show us? Is it like a mini menu for what you post about? Is your feed, which is like the cover of your Instagram book, does it give us a clear idea of, of, of who you are, right? As an actor and a human, okay? Um, when I go there, is everything professional? Is it on brand as an actor? Is it also on brand, you know, uh, would I want to work with you, right? There's a lot of questions that I'd ask if I went there, okay? Um, um, 
Sergey, as an actor, it seems like I have to choose between have a personal or professional social media presence. Um, yeah, I mean, actually, that is the, <laughs> that is the what you have to decide because some people just decide, okay, well, I'm just going to have a Facebook profile and I'm going to use it to just connect with the friends, friends and family and people I've worked with. And for some people, that's great. I actually talked about um, one of my clients who's an established um, older actor. And you guys, if you saw him, you would say, I've seen him in a million things. He, um, right now we're working on like, how does he use these connections on his Facebook profile? Like these connections, guys, you guys would be jealous. These are just friends. They're amazing people in the industry and they are just friends on Facebook. Um, some of them aren't even all using their real name, but these people are amazing. Literally, he could just grow his career by staying top of mind with those people on his profile. And that's what we're setting up a plan to do. Um, he is going to be adding Twitter just because of a project coming up. But for the most part, yeah, you could decide, I just want this private presence on my Facebook profile. Um, or I want this, um, you know, public presence that I want to grow, that I want to connect and network with. So what are your goals? Because really, it comes down to that. Okay. All right. You're welcome, Edward. I think this is my longest live ever. <laughs> I'm trying to make up for the fact that I realize I never go live on my own YouTube. So, okay. Um, Dr. Samita. Oh, so proud of you, Heidi. I have a postdoctorate in celebrity studies and now training in acting. Awesome. I would highly recommend your excellent work. Oh, thank you. That's a fascinating um, background. Also, also. You, you definitely have stuff to post about on social media then. Um, okay. Okay, a couple more questions and then I probably will um, sign off unless we're just going for two hours. Um, okay, Sergey, if I comment on anything political, which I have done perhaps too often before, then I divide my audience into two, those who agree and those who don't agree. Yes, and if you're using it for your career, you know that you will actually be turning people away. Um, your agents, your managers might tell you to stop posting about that. The projects you work for might tell you to stop posting about it. So what you need to decide is um, what are you using your social media for? If you're using social media for your business as an actor, then you need to start using it as a business. And if, unless you do like political satire, unless you're like Randy Rainbow, like then posting about politics all the time isn't really necessarily who you are, right? Um, so you need to think about that, okay? And if you are posting about it, Try to post about what you're for instead of what you're against. So you're at least going to come off in a positive light. You're posting about the issues and the things that are important to you, not the things you hate. Okay. It's going to totally attract the right people to your tribe and, um, you know, keep away the other people, the evil people, whoever they are. I don't know who, who and what you believe. <laughs> All right. Okay. Whew, I'm going to take another sip of apple juice. I'm so glad I got this because I knew I'd be on for a long time today. Mm. Give me a little boost. Okay. So let's see. Jana, so, gotta go self taping time. See you soon. Bye, Jana. Hope to see you in class since you asked about class. Um, have fun self taping. Uh, um, Azucena, that's a beautiful name. De La Fuente. Um, how many stories can you upload in one day? Um, well, that's the big difference between your grid and stories. You know, you can post on your feed a couple times a week now, guys. The party has really moved to stories and IGTV. Um, so you can post multiple times on your stories. Go for it. What I like to say is post, you know, go into your stories analytics, especially if you've got a business or creator account and really pay attention to your stats. Are people actually finishing your stories? It's a story completion rate. Like are people swiping through? If they are, then don't post so much on your stories. You, you just need to post as, you know, until people are paying, you know, until they're not paying attention anymore. And look across the top of your stories um, as a Senna, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. When you post a lot of stories, your stories go from dashes to dots. And I always say your story count should be more dashes than dots. If your stories are always like little dots because you're doing too many, you're probably doing too many, okay? <laughs> um, unless, unless when you look at those counts along the bottom, they stay consistent. So you got 500 people watching for the first one, and then it goes down a little 400, you know, uh, you know 490, 480. If it kind of stays consistent because you're going to lose some, then go for it. But if you notice a dramatic drop in those numbers, then then you're done, right? Um, Ryan, not so much a question, but thank you again. Love your content. Also, made sure to give you a shout out on my Instagram. Also, great. I will go. I will go look. Um, Robert, 
Well, I enjoy my AC. Yes, I'm going to turn it on in two seconds. Marla, need to get in your class. Thank you. You're welcome, Marla. Um, yeah, I mean, Instact, like I said, if there's ever a time to take the classes, you can get them now. You can take them whenever. And those checkpoints are available if you buy it now or in six months. You just check in with me as you go when you start it. And Instact is going to give you an entire plan. Okay. It's like having Instactor, I say it's like having eight to set 10 sessions with me for less than one, the cost of one session. Um, so I want you guys to be able to spend money on your headshots and your reels. So that's why I always make my classes so cheap. Okay. If I, if I sold these classes in any other business, some of them would be a thousand dollars. So no doubt I have some social rock stars here. That class would be a thousand dollars. Um, all right, Sky Guy 747. All my social media accounts use the handle Sky Guy 747. Do I need to change them to something closer to my real name? David Ray Rose. Um, well, if you're using them for your career, it would be smart to change them to your real name if you could get your real name. Um, I'm assuming Dave Rose is probably taken. Um, you know, unless Sky Guy 747 has a significance, like, are you a pilot? You know, you might be able to work that in, especially if that matches your brand as an actor. But it's always good to have your name. We need Dave Rose somewhere present. If you can't get it as your username, you need it as your name. Okay, um, definitely need it as your name. I have seen you as Sky Guy 747 now that I think about it. Numerous places. Um, Film student, I'm only going to be answering questions on social media, um, but if you're on TikTok, I'm answering questions like that on TikTok. <laughs> so go check it out. Um, trying to write, uh, I'm trying to write my Instagram to see how is your first impression, but the system doesn't allow. I'm not actually sure what you mean by that. Um, oh, to see how, well, I'm not gonna, as I said earlier, um, as I said, I, I don't look at anyone's first impression unless you're a client or a student. Um, if you are an Insta actor um, in class, then I will definitely look at it, okay? Um, but you do have to, you know, have a public account. Hey, Jay, I'm gonna answer a couple more. I have a personal, uh, both a personal and business, or um, I have both personal and business, I think it's supposed to be for acting Facebook profiles maybe, to this date, I keep family, personal friends off my acting Facebook profile as my mindset is, is to keep them separate. Is this correct on my part? Um, yeah, I mean, that's fine. That's really up to you. Um, you know, <laughs> ironically, my dad is always sharing. Who knows? My dad might be watching this and I just don't even know. Um, I don't think he has a YouTube account. But he he always shares my stuff on my, he, he followed my Marketing for Actors page. He's always sharing it because he's so supportive. But, um, but really... <laughs> You should be on my personal profile, right? Um, I like to keep the things separate as well. Um, especially, Jay, once you, if you start doing content where you do meet, you might be collecting custom audiences and may ever run ads. It's good to keep family separate from that because you don't want to waste your ad spend on people that, like, are not your target audience. So, um, so yeah. I mean, there will be a little bit of crossover. Some of your friends are going to be actors and they're going to be on your personal profile and they're going to be on your fan page. But yeah, generally keep your family on your personal page. Okay. Um, Sergey, thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to ask a, answer a couple more because that's what I see and I'm going to sign off. Uh, sorry if I'm asking something that's been asked. Not a problem. We've been on a very long time. <laughs> Starting acting sessions. No real yet, but I have headshots. Want to use Instagram as my direct social media. Should I start the profile with the photos? Um, well, you should set up your profile photo. That may be your headshot. It needs to be some kind of, you know, professional shot that shows us your essence and your vibe, which should be in your headshot. Um, your whole profile should not be headshots though. Um, you can integrate them into the feed or maybe even if you've got, you've got new headshots, you can do one post that has various photos. Um, I've seen people also upload headshots to their stories and put it as a highlight and it says headshots. So like if someone went on there, they would see a, um, an Instagram story headlight, or headlight. I've been talking a long time, highlight that just has their headshots. So that might be an option, but you do not want to have just an Instagram feed of just your headshots because your Instagram is the story of you and you are much more than the projects you book. So it needs to be a nice, well-rounded, well-rounded view. Okay. Something I definitely talk about on my YouTube channel. I guess we are on my YouTube channel. Um, so check out some videos there. JB Jones, num uh, number seven, um, or any of my classes will help you as well. Okay. All right. Um, Miss Rogan, yes, it's so important. You got to post what you're for, not what you're against. And so much on social media, people are seeing out of context. And when we get passionate about something that's controversial, 
we sometimes are not showing ourselves in our best light and that keeps us from opportunities. Okay. So I am going to sign off because it is an hour and 48 minutes and I was going to be on for an hour and I need to go join my daughter for the pool party in her kitty pool outside. <laughs> I don't think I even fit in that pool, but um, I got a pool party to go to. Thank you for joining me, guys. Um, just a quick reminder that that summer sale, last reminder, it is ending on Saturday um, where you can get all my classes on sale one time a year. Everything's like 50 to $150 off. So um, if you have, have any questions about those, let me know. Um, you know, in my Facebook group, direct message on Instagram, on Twitter, um, in the comments underneath this when we're done. Hopefully you get saved. And yeah, so thank you guys. Um, thanks for joining me. I will see you on social media. I'll see some of you in class. I know you. I will. And until next time, I will see you on social, guys. Bye.